I want to read you a poem before we get to our Bible verse. It is inspired by our Bible verse. It's a monologue for John 3, 1 through 17. We're going to read in just a moment, 1 through 9. This is the night talking to you right now. Stillness. And yet I hear the crickets singing incessantly among the reeds. It gives me comfort to know that my existence is not alone, siloed. When I think all has finally stopped for the day, I sense him, feel him before I see him. A shadowy figure moving slowly when concealed and swiftly when in the open. As the moon hits the figure, I can tell it is a man, and not just any man, a leader, a Pharisee. What's he doing out this late at night, moving sketchily in the darkness? Where is he going? It's not like I can betray myself and reveal him for all to see. No, no, I the night am his accomplice. His sudden movements stop at a door that has caused a lot of commotion in recent days. He knocks. It's done quietly, but it echoes so loudly. And here now, according to the Gospel of John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you that you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? This is the word of God for us, the children of God, and all of God's children said, Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Holy, heavenly, powerful Father, our Redeemer, Son, Holy Spirit, the gift of the Father, our sustainer, our counselor, the one who ever shines a light before each step that we might come and draw closer. Each of you in this trinity points one to another. The Father to the faithfulness of the Son, the Son, the Son to the power of the Father and the Holy Spirit, to both the Father and the Son. Each one in union and communion, one with another, crying out to a world to love as you love each other crying out to a world to accept your love that you have poured out to us in the life and death and resurrection of your Son. And Lord, as we come before you today, your children, kneeling before your cross, how can we understand this mystery? Are we not like Nicodemus in saying, how can this be? So open our hearts today, Lord that we might hear from you, that your power might descend into our lives, that your holy word might take residence in our souls and in our spirit, that we might ever more go forward as your children and give this message that only you can give. Speak through me in spite of me, that what is given and what is received is your message for your son on this, your holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name, amen. Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer. We had summer last weekend, didn't we? Nice, warm weather. In just one more day, we get to flip the calendar over. Can you believe 2021 is already half over? 
Is that scary? Almost half over anyway. Marking the days, marking the seasons. I was at the bank Friday and I happened to notice that the teller there had one of those calendars up where she marks each day off. I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. It seems a little depressing to see how quickly all those little marks come. Last weekend, we celebrated Pentecost. We celebrated the birthday of the church. We also celebrated, last Sunday, the end of a season. You might not have realized it. You know, we get so accustomed to the changing of the seasons that we almost don't even realize what it is that we're doing in the church. But there is a season, and I'm going to call it the season of Jesus. You see, it starts, that season starts with the beginning of the church calendar, which is not on January 1st. It's actually on the first Sunday of Advent. That starts the Christian calendar, and it starts the season of Jesus. Those four weeks before Christmas, those four weeks before the birthday of Christ, we focus on the coming of our Savior. We focus on the power and the revolution that is about to come into the world. We focus, again, on what it just might mean for Jesus to come back again during this season when we might actually get to see, see Jesus again face to face. And after Christmas, we skip along through the life of Jesus. We teach his miracles. We teach his teachings. His very presence starts to warn us that he's going to have to leave as we skip away through that season to Lent and Easter, season of fasting, of sacrifice. We remember what Jesus gave up for us. And of course... After that beautiful Easter where we realize the miracle of the resurrection, the miracle of God's power that frees us from slavery. But even then, the season of Jesus isn't over yet. It doesn't just end with Jesus dying and being born again or rising again. It continues on for 40 more days as Jesus tries to interpret for us what does this mean. Do we understand how powerful it, it is that God has come in the form of a son to live and to die for us and then to be resurrected again? No, nope, it's not over then because we watch Jesus go back to the right hand of the Father and we wait and we wait and we wait. Ten more days for the season of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of where God comes and takes up residence, no longer in a tent, no longer in a tabernacle, no longer hidden behind the veil of the Holy of Holies. God comes and he takes up residence in your heart and in my heart. The Trinity, this holy mystery where we experience God in three ways. Can anyone define that? Can anyone understand that? We're not supposed to. We actually are triune beings, body, soul, and spirit. We know we've got a body. We look at it every morning, don't we? We kind of know we got a soul because there's all this stuff going on inside that nobody else knows about, right? But the spirit, our spirit, can we deny that and just push it away? And in effect, isn't that what so many people do with the Holy Spirit? What is this Pentecost thing? What is this spirit? What is this wind that blows and seems to blow into our lives and clear out the cobwebs and open up our lives to the understanding of what Jesus wants to do in and through our lives? Well, brothers and sisters, that season ended last week. And we now enter a new season. Now we've got white up here on our cross today because it is Trinity Sunday. But next Sunday, we're going to change the pyramid to green. And it becomes what is commonly known in the church as ordinary time. Ordinary time. From now until we get back to the Advent season again. The ordinary time, the time of the church, the time of you and me, the time where we get to take what Jesus has done for us in the first half of the year 
and somehow incorporate it into our being and into our lives and out into the world. I don't know about you, but that almost seems anything but ordinary, doesn't it? Nicodemus ran through the night, scurrying along in the darkness, trying to get to Jesus. He didn't want anyone to see him. Here is this Pharisee, a leader of the Jews, sneaking into the presence of the Savior. Jesus, you have to be from God. Yeah, I am. And you have to be born again. What do you mean I have to be born again? What does that mean? Brothers and sisters, what does it mean for you to be born again? Ordinary time wants to almost take this wonderful mystery of a triune God and turn it into something that we can just put in a nice little box, a nice little word. It's just ordinary. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to be transformed by it. It's just everyday life. And by doing that, we have shrunk God down into something that we can articulate with the most incredible, fallible, human invention, words. Words. Can we shrink this mighty God down into a word? Can we shrink this mighty God down into an understanding of something called the Trinity? Yeah, three in one. Go figure. God is incomprehensible. God is beyond our understanding. God is supposed to be beyond our understanding. God is God. And we would be negligent if we tried to bring God down to our understanding, to something our mind can create. That's why God had to come in a form that we could understand, in the form of Jesus. Jesus is God, but in a form that we can touch, in a form that we can talk to, in a form that lived the life that you and I live. Going through all the same trials and tribulations and pains and wants and needs, but doing it perfectly. Because you see, if we tried to just say, well, God, you're God, so I can just be me, and we'll figure it out someday. But God's saying, no, that's not good enough. I want you to be uncomfortable with this understanding of who I am, says God. I want you to be uncomfortable. I want you to be challenged. I want you to risk stepping out into the world in my name. I want you to risk, like Nicodemus, being caught coming to my feet. I want you to risk being ridiculed. I want you to risk not being liked. I want you to risk, as a matter of fact, the world hating you, just like it hated my son. Are you feeling uncomfortable yet? Because if you are, you're in really, really good company. You've got a Holy Spirit who's willing to walk right there beside you who's willing to claim to the world this awesome God. You think you got a handle on him? Not even the beginning. Isn't that great? Do we want a God that we can understand? Do we want a God that we can put in a box? Do we want a God that we can put behind a curtain and say, you stay there? Uh -uh. I don't. Because I don't know about you, but I've watched some of the news. I need a God who's up to what's happening in this world. I want a God who not only knows what's happening, but is right there in the middle of it. I want a God who's got a plan. I want a God who's willing to risk everything to reach you and me and that beggar on the street and the prostitute on the corner and the drug addict who's sleeping it off. That's the God I want. I don't want a God I can understand. I want a God who's got this. We don't have to sneak through the night like Nicodemus. We can stand here and praise the Lord.
because right now, anyway, this is still America. And we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, men and women who have given everything so that we have the right to stand here and praise God's holy, awesome, powerful name. Amen? Amen. 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 Ordinary time. Ordinary lives in an ordinary world created by a extraordinary 